With my previous Splatoon XTF2 video, we tried to create the most suitable Splatoon weapon kits for our favorite murderous maniacs. However, with that done, it got me thinking, what if we put Splatoon weapons in TF2? Also, I can't take full credit for this idea, as it was a suggestion from a pal, so thanks again for that. Regardless, how would they work, and what would need tweaking to make for both an interesting but mostly balanced weapon in TF2's wacky world of weirdness? Which means no, as funny as it would be to see Heavy Weapons Guy turn into a squid and shimmy up a wall, we're not turning TF2 into Splatoon, but instead I'll be taking several Splatoon weapons and redesigning them in a way that would better translate into TF2 itself. Now when I say redesign, I don't inherently mean the look of the weapon, but instead I want to take the general concept of the original weapons and transform them into something more TF2 capable, if you will. For example, the Junior has weak and short range, but makes up for it by having high ink capacity, being lightweight, and firing fast. Which is great and all, sounds like a pretty decent Splatoon weapon. But if you put that in TF2, it means nothing. What is ink capacity to a spy? He doesn't know what that is or why that matters. So we'll take the basic concept, a short range but fast firing weapon, and find something close as a base. Let's say the sniper's SMG, that's similar enough. So that's our base. Now we adjust the numbers to A, better differentiate it, and B, better represent its Splatoon counterpart. Then we tack on a unique gimmick, because of course we'll need one. These are pretty outlandish designs, it only feel appropriate. And boom, done. Make sense? Dude, just get on with it already. Show don't tell. Oh, crap, uh, that's a good point. All right, let's just jump into it, starting with... Obviously, we can't cover all weapons in this video. That would be insane. So I just chose the ones I like the most, starting with the Splatana Stamper. The Stamper is slow, but a reliable damage dealer with decent range, and of course would make for a perfect knife for the spy. Though it might be a bit big, so we'll just... much better. Or, well, a little screwy. This new knife would be a tad slower than stock. What? I know, that sounds awful, but hear me out. This knife would have a pretty out there gimmick. It would allow spy to teleport. After getting a set amount of backstabs, the knife would allow Spy to set down a spot of ink, which would then allow him to sink into the ground and reappear at that initial spot upon command. And f I just realized that's just Sombra's teleporting thingy. That was not intentional. I, I, I am just realizing this while reading out the script again. Okay, well, um, you know what? I'm just gonna keep it. It would be cool and like Overwatch has taken plenty from TF2 and I mean plenty. So, you know, why not share the love a little bit? Also, no Overwatch hate. I, I do think the game has some merits. Overwatch 2 hate, however, wholeheartedly, all day. Either way, this be balanced differently to that anyways, as when you have full meter, cloaking will then diminish a part of that meter. Meaning when you have full charge, you need to then choose to cloak or teleport as one affects the other. I think you guys can see how outlandish I'm willing to get. But honestly, I don't think this be that crazy. The Spy needs backstabs to fill this new meter, and while I don't know just how many be a fair amount, since I don't play Spy, let's say it's reasonable enough for a decent Spy to fill a few times a game, meaning he gets a few teleports. That doesn't seem that overpowered, and he wouldn't be able to just place it anywhere. It would be balanced around the map, and the backstab requirement gives it a built-in cooldown. I think overall it'd be a pretty unique, big air quotes there, and fun way to give Spy a different type of ambush game, and I am still pissed it's just Sombra's Translocator. I thought I was being original. It probably feels a bit cheap doing another Splatana back to back, but come on. The Splatana wiper looks like something Demo drunkenly made in his basement one night and just went, Oh, that would make for a beautiful sword! Or something like that! Or don't know because I'm bloody f drunk! That was the worst Demo impression. I don't, I don't even know what that was. So, new Demo Knight sword, and oh my. If you thought the last one was wild, then hold on to your comically large pants because this is just the beginning. Obviously, being a sword, there's no random crits and all those expected stats you'd see, unless you're the Scotsman Skullcutter, but that's the exception. Regardless, the wiper would have slightly worse damage with a faster deploy and swing speed. I mean, it is just a windshield wiper after all, I can't imagine it's that hard to fling around. And on that note, it makes sense for it to do a bit less damage, which sounds just awful. I mean, swords can be a pain in the rear to use anyways, so having one with less damage kind of just sucks. But the wiper would make up for it with its unique gimmick. The wiper would be a utility sword, allowing Demoman to lob out a bit of ink, which would be similar to the Sandman's ball in terms of damage and speed, if not a bit slower and not going as far. Which probably doesn't sound like much of a trade-off, but don't worry, there's more. As these blobs of ink would have the ability to leave small blotches on the ground, that would give teammates a small speed boost as they run past them. Think cartoon character slipping on a banana logic, it's a slippery surface. With the bonus likely being something similar to Soldier's Whip in terms of speed and duration, but having a small cooldown of about 7 seconds or so. But that time can be adjusted if that seems harsh, so don't be afraid to leave a comment telling me if you'd adjust anything or your own ideas. And this applies to any concept in this video. I think this would give Demo Knight a little bit of variety in his playstyle, while still allowing him to play as Demo Knight alongside supporting his teammates. Even if it'd never be a good pick, it'd be a fun pick to mix up gameplay like the Loose Cannon or something along those lines, and it'd probably be pretty decent as a Hybrid Knight pick. Also, theoretically, it could allow Demo to potentially perform better trims using the extra speed to further launch themselves into the stratosphere. 
Not that he particularly struggles with that. For secondaries, I originally had one weapon in mind, the good old Splatbrella. For those who don't know, the Splatbrella is essentially a shotgun with a shield attached to the end, which after a few shots can be held out to protect the user from incoming damage, at the cost of not being able to attack. It's not exactly a good weapon in Splatoon, but in the right hands I feel it work great as a TF2 weapon, more specifically for our favorite sandwich devouring Russian. I mean, have you absorbed so much damage they gave him a magic healing sandwich? And by magic, I mean ham. So giving him a shield of some sort be a well appreciated unlock, I'm sure. Of course, to balance it out, it'd have slightly weaker damage and perhaps a slower firing speed, as the Spotbrella itself tends to be quite slow. And in exchange for that, Heavy can hold out the shotgun to engage a shield, which can absorb up to a certain threshold of damage. Let's say about 200 or so, but that can be changed if it seems too good or too little. Another unique ability of the Spotbrella is that if it's held up for too long, it pops up the base of the gun and moves forward, allowing the user to push up on would-be attackers. At least, that's the idea. It usually just gets you killed in Splatoon though. Either way, why not add that as well? Let's say instead of it just popping off after a certain amount of time, we let Heavy pick when it pops off. And to balance it, perhaps the shield needs to absorb a certain amount of damage beforehand. This way, it can't be spammed on a spawn and things along those lines. TF2 secondaries can kind of be anything. A sandwich, a shield, a jar of pace. So to just do general weapons be a bit of a waste. With that, I absolutely had to take one of Splatoon's sub-weapons and give a go at converting one into TF2. But choosing which one to convert was a little bit more difficult than I thought. I have made it apparent I don't care about breaking some TF2 weapon conventions here. This is such a weird video idea, so why bother being so strict with the concepts? That being said, I don't want to go too far. So I was trying to avoid grenades, smoke bombs just seemed lame, locating items are a tad boring, and I was starting to get this feeling this section would be a tad harder than I originally anticipated. But then I saw something at the bottom of the Inkpedia sub-weapon page. Small fry. Technically, this little bundle of atoms is a Splatoon sub-weapon in Splatoon 3 story mode, being used to distract enemies and even thrown at them to Diddy Kong Ford be them to death. Now, does that count as a sub-weapon for this video, being in the story mode and not in any proper kit? I don't know, but I don't care, because it'd be funny. Because I had a damn brain blast. Let's give this beautiful beastie the sniper and let him lob his freaky ass at enemies. And if you want to make sure it fits TF2's art style better, then turn them into a normal salmon or just make them a damn crocodile. Both would work. Regardless, for stats, I was thinking small fry can be thrown at enemies, and upon making contact reduce consecutive damage akin to the flying guillotine, yet dealing less immediate damage but lasting for a longer period of time. So overall it'd do a bit more damage, however small fry can be knocked off by teammates shooting it off the afflicted person. As an added bonus, throwing small fry near enemies and having them get too close will help small fry yell and reveal the enemy's location. This one I kept pretty close to the in-game counterpart with only a few tweaks, and I am still conflicted on if it'd be any good or if there's no point using it over Jurati. Yeah, never mind. Jurati is still better. But even then, this be a fun weapon to mess around with on a class that is sorely missing those. I love the bow though. It's just silly. Doing a video like this and not including the splatter shot would be a damn injustice. But what would the splatter shot be used for in TF2? In Splatoon, it's essentially the base weapon. The junior might be the first you get, but when you think basic Splatoon weapon, you likely think the splatter shot. It's one of the closest weapons to being balanced in terms of range, speed, and damage, making it one of the most reliable but basic options in the game. And when I think simple but strong and reliable primaries, I think of the scatter guns. So, screw it. Let's turn this into this. Somehow. My first thought is to make a kind of hybrid of the shortstop and scatter gun, having a mid to short range pestering tool, meaning it have overall weaker DPS when compared to other scatter guns in exchange for more reliable mid range damage. Yet due to its unique gimmick, it would also have more base ammo and slightly slower firing speed. This new mechanic allowing Scout to switch between two different firing modes. One being a single shot slug like a typical scatter gun, and the other being a three ring burst with each consecutive shot being weaker than the last, but allowing you to adjust your aim mid shot and better pester enemies. Yes, I did just make a better shortstop. I am a shortstop believer. But this jerk needs buffs, and it'll never get them. So, new weapon concept. I hate to butt in again, but if it's a Splatoon weapon fused with a TF2 weapon, then what's so new about it? Uh, kinda new weapon concept. Regardless, to finish off this video, I wanted to tackle one of Splatoon's special weapons, with the Trizuka. The Trizuka is a slow but deadly rocket launcher that can shoot up to three rockets in a row that explode in a moderately wide radius. I don't think I need to explain who I'd give this explosive pup to, as this type of weapon would make Soldier Crack infuse tears of joy. Confused of course because it's shooting toxic neon ink, but I don't think Soldier cares as long as it explodes. And it sure does. Most of the weapons in this video are silly fun weapons, and this will be the most gimmicky one we get. This new rocket launcher would shoot three rockets at once, with them starting relatively close to each other, giving Soldier a pretty accurate and extremely powerful shot on close range targets. However, to balance this, they'd then begin to spread out pretty drastically as they travel in the air, and would have marginally worse damage, but less fall off, alongside a self damage reduction. Though, these stats, just like any weapon in this video, can be adjusted. 
My thought is worse damage close range, since you'll likely blow your targets to smithereens anyways. And for the lesser fall off, with the super inaccurate spread, it'll make it pretty unlikely you hit anything further away. So if it does, why not make sure it does some sort of damage? Yeah, this one's a bit bizarre. Instead of three rockets in reserve with like a slower firing speed or something real simple like that, I thought this more outlandish idea make for a more intriguing weapon concept. Would it be good? Hell no. But a unique one that would see some good application as a joke pick to stomp lobbies. It'd essentially be a rocket shotgun at close range, especially since it'd have a bigger blast radius with the closer initial rockets. Yet it'd suffer pretty harshly with mid to long range. It'd be a weird weapon, but a fun one to throw on in more cramped maps just to mess with people. Uh, what the hell just happened? I think the power just went out. Hmm, I guess I'll end the video here? Did you forget it was your month to pay rent again? Oh, look at the time. I, I, I should really be ending this video. Okay, bye. I can't with that slug sometimes. Oh carp, he didn't do the outro. Um, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, all that junk. Maybe, if enough people do, I can get my voice back and not use this text to speech thingy. But if you guys like this video, make sure to tell me in the comments and maybe I'll do a part two. Okay, bye. Again. Yeah, bye.